Hey, this is Jay Saltzman, buildingfantasy.com, here today to talk about what draft type is best for you. Um, majority of the drafts are going to be snake or auction, so let's jump right in to the snake draft. So a snake draft is more traditional. Snake draft generally takes one to two hours. You got attention to detail. It's easier to have a plan because you're going to have a certain pick. And so if prior to the draft, you plan depending on you either know what pick you have or you make a plan. Hey, if I have this pick, these are the guys that look like they'll be available based off mock drafts or, or uh, rankings lists. And, and you can have a plan based on what pick you're going to have. So sometimes it's fun to release that draft order and make it a thing, you know, maybe a week before you release the draft order on YouTube or on a video or however you want to do it, a group chat. And uh, sometimes that's fun. There's also less administration, in a snake draft versus an auction because everyone's just going to know their picks. And, uh, and so to give you more of a feel, if we jump ahead a little bit, you'll see uh, the snake here and the way it works. Oh, now we're at auction. Okay. So the snake here, as you see round one, it's going to go down the list, 10 owners. So you got one through 10. Now, the 10th pick is going to also come back and it's going to snake around. So they're going to have the 11th, 9 will then pick 12th, 8th, 13th, and so on. And when you get back up to the top of the round 20, technically the first round, the first overall pick will not pick again till the 20th, but they had a huge advantage taking the number one overall guy. Uh, so then they pick at 20 and it snakes back down. So then they pick 20 and 21 and now they're going to go back to back. And, and so on until the end of the draft, hence a snake draft. And, uh, and so, like I said, there's just less administration. And it's easier to have a plan because, you know, hey, I have the seventh pick. Or, I, or you come up with some ideas in your head. Because these are three, four players that are going to be there around seven. And, uh, you know, okay, if I have the seventh, I have the 14th or 15th pick. And I know that around there, certain players. So you have an idea of who you want going ahead of time. Now, in the auction uh, draft auction draft. It's uh, I think it's great for fantasy. However, they are longer drafts uh, because it's an auction, uh, and I do think it takes more research because you have to have an idea of of the players and their value price wise, not just where they go and what pick and what few players will be there. Because now you have an option to get anyone you want. It's fun to be able to have any player. And so if, if let's say you're in a baseball league and you want Mike Trout, you can spend as much as the bid will go until someone else stops bidding with you to get Mike Trout. So the way the auction will work is, again, for ease sake, let's go. Everyone gets 200 budget dollars for this draft. So you get 200 budget dollars and there's 10 owners. Owner A will nominate Mike Trout. And then everyone, you know, Owner C, $7. Owner D, $12. Everyone should say their name prior, and uh, that way everyone knows what's going on in the amount. And the bid will continue until there's no more bid. Going once, going twice, sold to owner you know, F. And then owner B, it'll go back to the next owner. Owner B will now nominate someone. I nominate Manny Machado for $7, you know, and the bidding goes. And everyone bids not a turn-by-turn -turn thing. Everyone, your name and the price. And if someone wants to go higher, their name and the price until the bidding stops. And you go until the rosters are full. That's been an issue in some leagues in the past where people will spend all their money and have 10 open spots. And that defeats the purpose, you know. So if you have 10 open spots, you better have $10 a budget. And you got to wait till you can get $10 players, you know, 10 single-dollar players. Uh, to fill out your roster. So uh, the auction is exciting. It is longer. Uh, if you do it online on a website, like, you know, if you're on ESPN doing the auction, if it does go by quick, you know, it doesn't take as long as if you're doing it live or on the phone or Skype or, you know, group text. Uh, so there is more admin with the auction. Somebody needs to keep track of the price. Someone needs to, you know, keep the auction going and rolling and whose who's turn is it to nominate. Uh, so both drafts are awesome they have a purpose you know i do enjoy the auction draft but i really enjoy having a snake draft so i i almost like to make sure to have one of each in every every fantasy season i do is have my auction draft which is my more pump draft and then a snake draft because i've done all this research i know all this now i want to get in some more traditional snake drafts and uh, and you know that's generally how you're going to do some mocks so the snake we went over again it just snakes around hence the term a snake draft uh 
Uh, there will be strategy for snake drafts. That'll be for another video. Uh, not for this is just to pretty much explain the difference of the different what type of drafts you're going to run into or what what are the options as a commissioner you can uh, give your league to have a draft with. So snake or auction. Okay. Uh, so the auction draft, again, there's strategy for the auction draft. You get bare basics, you get a budget, you need to fill out your roster. Uh, and it, you want to do as good as you can to spend all your money. If you're left over with $17, which trust me happens, you get frustrated because $17 might have been a good player. Or you stop bidding on someone and you could have continued bidding. Mm, so the auction draft, you definitely want some owners that are in the know or... Not that the snake draft's any less. Trust me, there's a place for both. But a snake draft, like I said, it's more traditional. So for for maybe your redraft leagues, that for fifty percent of the re, you know I don't for the redraft leagues, I would say you do find both. But I think more redraft players are geared to having a snake because an auction really does take more. If you don't prep for an auction draft, you're gonna fail. Uh, and it does take quite a bit of prep. A snake draft you better prep for too, but an auction draft takes two, three times the amount of prep. And if you don't, it shows versus owners that do take the time to prep it and know what's up. So I mentioned live or online or offline. So let's start on the left here in green and the offline. Offline is something like uh, you have a Discord or GroupMe or an, a text app or just a texting group text or an email, and you have the draft this way. Now, through a group text, it can take a long time. I mean, some these are drafts that you want maybe to extend over a weekend or a week, and everyone is is committed and involved, willing to be on there. But that's, that's not the main type of draft uh, if you're going to go offline. I think you're generally going to use Skype or a video chat, or everyone's going to want to meet in person. I prefer making the draft a big thing. Of course, there's leagues where I don't know anyone. I'm joining ESPN League for a little bit of money and you play online and I'm just going to have the online draft. But for my more important leagues with uh, friends or family or uh, the, the the leagues I hold is more of a community where there's chat going on. You know, If it's possible to have those drafts in person, that's great. If not, also, I think Skype works well or any sort of video uh, chat. We've used Skype before and you, know, you could have hubs so you could have a hub of five guys uh in one city that all happen to live nearby and maybe two other people and maybe not you have all 12 owners somewhere else and you all meet on skype and you can do just voice you can do video it's up to you you can even if you want to go a step further on the skype have the live board for everyone to see which we've done which is great because it clues everyone in and, and keeps you uh, alive and attached and in the zone when you be, are able to see it all and it's done nicely so they are a little bit longer uh done offline uh, quite quite a bit longer especially if like a group text that could be a while video chat is four to five hour draft because people are doing especially if it's an auction maybe a snake's faster maybe a, sna a snake is one to two hours you know in the auction because you got 12 people live, you know, and, and so it, it seems to me it's fascinating because it's like, man, it's hard to get 10, 12, 15, 16 owners, grown people live for a draft or, or even if it's not like live in person, but, you know, on video or, or in, even live over here online. Uh, but it happens and it happens. Look how many fantasy leagues there are. So it happens all the time. It happens often. So online is definitely quicker. And what I mean by online, it refers to using the host site to run the draft. So you join ESPN, you click that you're going to do the draft on, you know, whatever date, February 17th at 7 p.m. Everyone knows it's February 17th at 7 p.m. They log on a half hour or 10 minutes before the website. Boom, it takes you to the draft and you do your draft. And so that's what an online draft is. It's definitely faster it's definitely uh definitely uh common especially like the mock drafts are held that way you know you do it online and it's a taste of what your what that looks like and it is faster i mean you can get done with those in 45 minutes sometimes i like i said i do prefer making the draft a big deal or, or making it more than just a quick 45 minute online thing where i don't chat or see or talk or hear uh, but again, that's only for the leagues that I treat as a, a community that are maybe with my friends or family or people I'll play fantasy sports with for a long time and know a little more. So what should you do next? Okay, so the owners, uh, who and how video, you've heard me say it a bunch. A league is only as good as its owners. 
uh, the other league basics videos, such as host sites, league types, uh, et cetera, there's a few others there, but uh, fantasy league basics. And uh, if you're watching uh, this to start a league, uh, begin getting feelers, begin testing the waters, begin asking some of your friends or some of the people in mind or letting them know, hey, I'm starting up this league, bounce some ideas off them, uh, maybe show them some of these videos. Again, uh, it, it jumps straight to sports specifics if you're ready for that type of stuff and you want to just check, hey, wins quality starts or three-point uh, makes or three-point field goal percentage. It's all there. Uh, or you go to league builds and we're going to build a league together. Beautiful uh, constitution and just go through everything together to make it easy on it. You're going to have the final say in all the choices. I'm just going to provide the options and the nice uh, format. So uh, this is Jason Saltzman, buildingthefantasy.com. Hi, guys. Real Life Peter Griffin here. You know what really grinds my gears? A poor constructed fantasy league. Continue to tune in, and thanks for watching. BuildingTheFantasy.com. Eh.